Welcome back to the Sportsmag Zone. Let's talk football. Members of Jamaica's Reggae Girls squad have been assembling in Panama ahead of Wednesday's CONCACAF Gold Cup qualifier. In a release earlier on Monday from the Jamaica Football Federation, it stated that members of the technical and management staff are already in Panama with the remaining members scheduled to leave Kingston at 3 p.m. That was earlier today. It went on to state that two players, Taisha Nelson and Shangay Nelson, were also expected to depart Jamaica via that 3 p.m. flight. Now, just quickly, some news coming out of Panama earlier today um, that a government contract or that a number of individuals in Panama are disgruntled with the awarding of a government contract to an overseas company, specifically a Canadian company, and it has caused some, un caused some unrest in the country. Um, in fact, a number of roads have been blocked and there is even a possibility um, from what I am understanding that the venue for Wednesday's match between Jamaica and Panama could be changed. Um, we await um, further information on that matter and as soon as we have it, we'll bring it to you. Disappointingly though, for Jamaica's senior women's football program, all the members of the Reggae Girls squad that got to the knockout phase of this year's FIFA World Cup decided to withdraw from the upcoming Gold Cup qualifiers. The team cited the constant mistreatment from the Jamaica Football Federation as the reason for their withdrawal. However, earlier this afternoon, the Jamaica Football Federation released an extensive statement with an aim of what it describes of clarifying the facts. The JFF statement outlined the following one. We, the JFF, spent close to US 4 million on the campaign to and during the FIFA Women's World Cup. The only money that was owed to the Reggae Girls up to last week is 20% of the JFF prize money from the 2023 Women's World Cup. Yeah, the reason provided was that although the contract stated that an amount of 20% is to be paid to the players, including those playing in qualification matches, it did not specify how the amount is to be distributed amongst the players. Now, the JFF says, although the total prize money from FIFA was approximately US 1.8 million, of that amount, there is a reimbursement that the JFF is in the process of claiming. The players are insisting on 20% of the $1.8 million. Meanwhile, the JFF has advised that they can only pay out the incentive on the amount of $1.2 million received so far. Point four, the players asked about who the composition of the coaching staff, which was a condition of responding on being available. This is not a requirement under the current contract. Five, the contract states that the standard travel category is economy, but that the JFF reserves the right to determine the travel category based on circumstances. The release went on to state that it is important to note that the JFF has always facilitated upgrades given the circumstances and requests from clubs and the coach. And finally, the JFF wrote to the girls individually advising their selection would be suspended. A mouthful coming from the Jamaica Football Federation earlier today as uh, Mariah pointed out at the top of the show quite detailed, quite lengthy and from my perspective it is good that the JFF has come out and said something on this matter Lance and Mariah, what do you make of this? Well, I think it was very necessary because for me, it's always difficult when you're looking on from the outside and you're only hearing one side of the story. So for me, it was important that the JFF came out um, to the public and gave their side of what was happening. Because even you, Ricardo, on the show was, show was saying that, you know, we can't only think about the girl's side in other terms because maybe some of the requests are, you know, things that they can't abide by we always have to remember the gff one of the things that they've always spoken out about is being cash trapped right the financial issues so 
to, to see this release coming on from the GFF, the fact that, you know, the girls are insisting they want 20% of the prize money and the total sum of the prize money, not all that they could afford to distribute, so that's one. They're questioning who the coach is and then they will make themselves available based on who the coach is. I find some of the requests that the GFF has included in their press release, to me, is a bit unreasonable because if I'm playing for a team, I can't decide if I'm available unless I like the coach. I find that to be something that doesn't sit too well with me. And I've always supported the girls. Mm. Well, to be honest, I think one of the issues here that has caused this contentious discussion um, on this issue is, from the JFF standpoint, it is not proper business practice to have a team dictating terms to the JFF. The JFF is in charge of football, so um, they, they are in control of, of decisions regarding football. Obviously, um, you want to make decisions that are compatible with what the team wants. But the bigger issue for me here is that the relationship between the reggae girls and uh, the Jamaica Football Federation has been fractured for a very long time. And there is a lack of trust and confidence from the reggae girls' standpoint in the Jamaica Football Federation. I saw the lengthy um, uh, presentation that they put out in a press release today, and from their perspective, I, I can understand all of what they have said, but the issue goes way beyond that. And complicating the issue for me now is that we are in the throes of a presidential election for the JFF coming up. So there's a lot of... Um, there is a lot of bacchanal that is happening at the moment behind the scenes, some of it not coming out uh, for obvious reasons. And uh, this current JFF is under a lot of pressure. And uh, they have handled the girls' program very, very badly. And while the girls may be unreasonable in some of the positions that they are taking, they are human beings. And I quite understand their frustration and the frustration of their coach who is no longer the coach because his contract was not renewed, because the performance of the girls on the international stage has been world-class. The performance of the JFF as administrators has been, I would like to find a way to describe it, but it certainly has been world-class. I said on Friday's show that I'd give them one out of 10 if I was um, rating their performance as an administrator. So if you have a world-class entity being guided by an entity that is performing poorly, there is going to be disconnect and there is going to be frustration uh, from the standpoint of the reggae girls from this, uh, in this case. And um, I just see what the JFF put out today as, as damage control because, you know, what is happening right now is very embarrassing and it shouldn't have gotten here. And I think the reggae girls are frustrated, and I know from the JFF standpoint, they feel as if the, 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 the girls are acting unreasonably. But my problem is that they have reached this position because of the history between the two, the two, the two entities here. And I, I can't say that um, I'm in full sympathy with the JFF because I, I am not. I don't think anybody can be in full sympathy with the Jamaica Football Federation, Lance, because I think the JFF, um, as we all know, have made a number of mistakes and foul-ups. With not, both men not, and women. Yeah, not just with the women's programme, but also with the men's programme. Mm -hmm. um, and before I even go any further, because there's an important point I want to make, I want people to understand that this is not a JFF versus women's issue. This is an issue of the JFF versus its players, whether men or women. So I don't want people to start making this a women's issue or anything like that. Having said that, Lance, I completely hear you. You make a lot of fair points. One of the things I want to make clear, though, as I think is already clear, that there is a conflict here between the Jamaica Football Federation and the reggae girls. No doubt about that. I said on Friday that the girls, I felt the girls could have and should have looked at the bigger picture with Gold Cup qualifying coming up. And I was smashed on X for that. That's fine. Not a problem. Here's what I have to say today, today though. 
In my opinion, when it comes to conflict resolution, it is important that you explore and exhaust all the possible conflict resolution channels before you get to the most drastic action. In my opinion, I think the girls were a little hasty in moving to making themselves unavailable in this situation, and I feel even more so now if I am to believe everything that the Jamaica Football Federation would have presented in that press conference today. So why, why are you saying if you are to believe, as if you have your, uh, your concerns? No, it's not about having concerns because the reggae girls could well come out tomorrow and say, ABC, that is not the case. Okay. So, so I have to say that. Okay. I have to say that. I also want to say, though, that within the contract that the reggae girls speak of that need to be honored, and this is something that you find in almost all contracts between national federations and their players, is that you have a grievance clause. What does that grievance clause do, Lance and Mariah? If there is a dispute, it gives you the opportunity to activate that grievance clause. And what that means is that you can get third parties in, which would also include a mediator, and the matter can be taken from there. And this is why I feel the girls moved a little bit hastily to get to the point of making themselves unavailable and compromising the country's ability to advance to the Gold Cup for next year, which I see as a very important event. If I were advising them, just quickly, Mariah, sorry, but if I were advising them, I would say to the reggae girls, first of all, activate that grievance clause, get to the mediation process, and if at the end of mediation you are still in a position where you think that you are being unfairly treated, then I would say I am 100% behind you and the decision that you have made in this case. The grievance clause is in the contract as far as I am concerned for these very issues and these types of disputes. And the fact to me that they have moved ahead to, 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 to make themselves unavailable for such an important series of matches without exploring this option is disappointing to me, and I think they have missed an opportunity in that sense. And, and the point I want to touch on is the fact that you said they acted too hastily, right? Yeah. Because in their response, it's as if to them, they did everything that they could do in their power. And I'm saying they haven't because here is a clause that is in their contract that is for these specific situations, Lance and Mariah. It's like Sportsmax saying to you, Lance and Mariah, if you have a grievance, this is how we deal with it. Th there's no doubt, you know, guys, that there is distrust between the Jamaica Football Federation and the reggae girls. And that is exactly why a third party is needed in a situation like this, because it has clearly gotten to the stage where the egos have gotten so big that it's difficult for for the, the reggae girls and their representation to sit around a table with the Jamaica Football Federation members slash executive and have a conversation that is going to get us to a solution that does not include or, or a solution that has the least damaging effect on the country's football, on the country's women's football. But do you realize that it's fractured to the point that they speak to each other via press releases? But that's exactly why the third party is needed, Mariah. And that's exactly why, in my opinion, it would have been perfect. It would have been perfect to activate this grievance clause because what it means is that now you get in third party representation and you can have that conversation. Yeah? Instead of everything that has been going on now, where you have this situation, as you rightly pointed out, the, the girls are writing letters left, right, and center. The JFF has to be sending out a press release. Nobody is coming forward to be cross-examined, which, by the way, is another issue I have, but I won't even get too much into that. I am saying 
activate this grievance clause, sit down, have the conversation, sort this thing out. Sort this thing out. You know when we're going to feel this, especially if you are genuine women's football fans, which by the way I am. I watch all their games. And when you're going to feel this is when the Gold Cup comes around next year and the reggae girls are not involved in that tournament, which by the way, as far as I'm concerned, is an important tournament for the development of the team and building towards another World Cup. Because you don't want to get to the round of 16 at this World Cup and the next time it comes around, you're not even there. You want to make a good run of it. And I think the Gold Cup is an important tournament on that journey. And what really worries me is that members of the GFF would be people that you'd expect to have a passion and a love to ensure that the country's football is represented at the highest level and everything is done in the best interest to ensure that football wins and of course Jamaica, the country, is first. The footballers as well, when we talk to them, there appears to be this inherent passion, this love for country, football first and all that. And to see all of that passion and love pushed aside just by this rift is not a good look at all. And it's not good for Jamaica and the football moving forward because these headlines and this history never really goes away you know it just makes you know it dampens the reputation of jamaica football and for me when i see them play against panama on wednesday and let's just say the results don't go in their favor these are the things that will really bother us looking on from the outside yeah well I, as i said at the top i don't want to disconnect what is happening now from the fact that there is a jff general election a uh, presidential election coming up and uh, Ricardo, you have mentioned quite a few times, and I understand, um, to try to repair this damage, to look at the bigger picture. I get the feeling that the reggae girls are prepared to see everything crash because they are just unprepared to continue working with this, with this administrative bunch um, for the reasons that they would have outlined in the past about mistreatment and so on, which is some, a word they have used repeatedly. And this didn't start last year or the year before or the year before that. So the girls, to me, are, are tired. And um, there's a lot about the JFF that begs questions about efficiency and uh, proper administration. For instance, we are hearing now, I saw the General Secretary on television talking over the weekend about a possibility of the election for the JFF president, president mm -hmm. uh, being put off until January. Yes. Now, it's constitutionally due in December, and it should be staged in December, Yes. right? And um, we have known for, for the past four years that it's going to be staged or should be staged in December 2023. Mm -hmm. So if they are now telling me that because of issues of um, the pillars not being in place and so on, they may extend the deadline be into the new year. To me, that is unacceptable. And, and the JFF continues to operate in a way that shows that it is inefficient. And, 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 and I understand that the girls may have gone the grievance method that you just pointed out that is in their, in their contract, but the way I see it, the girls are fed up. Mm. And even though logically and ethically that is the proper thing to do yes. to try to get it, an arbitrator and sort things out, the girls at the moment have just given up on this administration. Well, a couple of things, Lance, and, and let me say quickly because this isn't uh, my dominant point. Mm. Um, for me, you can't be saying, well, we signed a contract and within the contract you are to honor it. And then in that very contract is a way how we deal with disputes and then you go about dealing with it a different way. Um, I, I don't know that I can agree with that, right? Having said that, though, given the release from the Jamaica Football Federation today, mm. right, what do you make of the Jamaica Football Federation saying, we have paid over pretty much all the monies that we owe to the girls, with the exception of 
um, the portion that they were supposed to get as bonuses, um, the JFF portion that they were supposed to get 20% from as bonuses. We wrote to the girls and asked them how they wanted this money um, to be disseminated. No response. We put together a formula and made a suggestion. Still no response. Um, and, and so that delay is because we did not get the response and that the girls are upset that they want the 20% from 1.8 million US dollars when the JFF has only gotten 1.2 US dollars. Mm. Well, my response to that is a repeat of what I just said, mm -hmm. that I don't think the girls have acted um, properly at every stage of, 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 this, of this issue. Yes. But I repeat that the, the girls appear to me to be fed up. And uh, their history tells me that they have neither trust nor confidence in yes. the JFF. And uh, to me, they are just behaving as if whatever happens, happens. They, they, they don't care anymore because they don't want to work with these people. Well, Lance, I must be the most patient man in the whole wild world, right? But if I sign a contract, I am going to exhaust all the possible options in that contract for me to get what I think belongs to me um, before I get to the stage that the girls have gotten to. Um, and I am not saying that the girls can't be fed up because I do understand that when you feel that you have been mistreated over a long period of time, it can be difficult in situations like that to see the bigger picture. But again, Part of why you, you sign contracts and part of why you have advisors is that there's a greater understanding of how to go about a lot of these things. Now, Lance and Mariah, I just cannot accept that with this option available to the girls that you would essentially, in my opinion, almost hold the country at ransom um, and put us in a position where we are unlikely to qualify for the Gold Cup next year when all the possible options were, were, were not exhausted in this matter. That's where I am on, on this. Um, and, and uh, I, you know, this is unfortunate, Lance and Maria, because a lot of these situations will make it seem as if you are trying to pick a side. In this one, for sure, I know I am not trying to pick a side. I have no friends at the Jamaica Football Federation, and I have none in the reggae girls camp. What I do have, though, is a love for country, and a love for football, and a love for women's football. And I would want to see the very best for Jamaica on the global stage. And I don't think what is happening now is going to end up being the best situation for Jamaica and Jamaica's women's football. Yeah, so we await the next press release because <laughs> the where? women now, they have to respond to what the JFF sent. Mara, you are hilarious, by the way. You know that, right? No, but that's the truth, though. <laughs> that's exactly what we're doing tomorrow. We're going to come here. You know what I would like? I would like to sit down with a member of the Jamaica Football Federation and I would love to sit down with a representative from the Reggae Girls. So you have a man for tomorrow? I, I have so many questions that I would like to ask. And I think if you are confident in your position, you should have no issues being cross-examined. Mm. Mm. So he needs a cameraman tomorrow. <laughs> He's no, I, I, to have the JFF. This, I have this gorgeous studio. No, but if they don't want to come to you, you're going to have to head across to the JFF. Okay. All right, let's take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs>